Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick update on my experience with the Sony A7R Mark II. I've been getting a lot of questions about this camera, incredibly popular and for good reason, but one of the most frequent or most important questions I feel that needs to be addressed is whether or not this camera overheats while shooting UHD video. After all, it is one of its uh, key features outside of the fact that, well, it does have a laundry list of other upgrades from the previous gen. Uh, and the short answer to that is yes, it does overheat. It will take some pushing, uh, and I'll explain that through the course of this video. You may have noticed I've already got uh, alongside it the lenses I've been using, the uh, 70 to 200 f4 G FE lens. These are all full frame E mount lenses, which means they are native uh, E mount lenses that are full frame. I've got the Zeiss 24 to 70 zoom, also f4. And then last but not least, arguably maybe my brand new favorite. Uh, the 16 to 35 Zeiss F4. And again, all F4, but they all seem to do a very good job, especially now with this electronic shutter or silent shutter, uh, just a major improvement beyond the 42 megapixel difference uh, that we have with this new uh, backlit sensor on top of the fact that, well, again, a laundry list of upgrades from the A7R. But with regard to overheating, this is what I have experienced for those of you that are curious. Uh, first and foremost, when shooting UHD video, if you leave the LCD on the back of the body, the camera will overheat more quickly. That's the first tip I want to give to users. In my experience, if you keep it off body, you're going to get more time. How much more time is going to vary uh, based on the conditions you're shooting in? How hot is it outside or in the studio? That will play a large role. After all, the overheating issue is all about the heat sink internally in the camera and how hot it's getting. So it will reflect its environment, no question about it. Uh, in my experience, uh, basically, if you keep the LCD off body and you're not shooting in 85, 90 degree weather uh, or internal temperature based on your lighting setup, you're looking at somewhere around an hour to an hour and a half of shooting before the camera decides to shut itself off. Keep in mind that also, uh, when it comes to shooting UHD video, I wish Sony, and this is a criticism, believe it or not, beyond just the overheating, would have given us a new battery with substantial improvement in battery life. Uh, I'm not going to call it a cost-cutting measure, although Sony has been using the uh, FH50 now uh, for a long time. And essentially, in my experience when shooting video, uh, I'm not going to call it abysmal, but you know, you better be prepared to have a lot of batteries. Uh, basically, there's a reason Sony includes two batteries, and it's not just for still shooting. It's because when shooting UHD, this camera sips the juice like no other. Uh, now, with regard to overheating, is it acceptable? Of course, to some of you who've been shooting with the GH4 or other uh, non-full frame uh, UHD or 4K capable cameras that don't have any overheating issues, you're going to look at this and say, this is unacceptable. Uh, but most pros that I've spoken to find that for the capability of the A7R Mark II, the overall functionality both in the still and video world, uh, and the fact that it is affordable when you consider its capability. Again, we're not comparing this to sub full frame based cameras because that's not a like comparison. As much as people love to do that, this is a relative bargain. And when I've addressed with them uh, overheating issues, they have flat out said to me, they would rather buy two of these bodies in order to compensate for the overheating issues as opposed to the other alternatives uh, in the cinema world that they'd have to shell out for, which are much, much more expensive and less feature-rich and in many ways uh, do not offer the flexibility or overall quality and capability of the A7R Mark II. So yes, the camera does overheat. If you keep the screen against the body, again, it will overheat more quickly exactly how much maybe 20 minutes more quickly. Um, so a good idea to keep the LCD off body uh, when shooting UHD video with this. Uh, to me, it is not a game breaker because I am not filming weddings. If you are, then you might want to pick up two of these bodies rather than one. And while many of you are going to interpret that comment as ridiculous, from a cost perspective, it makes perfect sense if you're going to compare it to uh, a full frame option with UHD video, which doesn't really exist, but the sort of cameras that you're going to have to compare this to, uh, whether it's a RED camera, you know, something that's going to deliver uh, similar quality, uh, then the budget does make you aware of the fact that 
3200 for this body, especially if you already own lenses, is a bargain. And if you know you can get an hour and a half of video out of it, if you've got enough batteries, that is, to actually get to that overheat uh, threshold, then having a second body and a second army of batteries is going to be well worth your money spent, especially because of the flexibility. I mean, you're getting best-in-class 42 megapixel sensors out of that BSI uh, full-frame sensor. And then on top of that, uh, so many different advantages, whether it's the um, basically the broadest and most accurate uh, electronic uh, OLED-based EVF on the market, uh, but also, of course, that incredible video quality, which depending on what lens you have mounted on it, is just going to be stunning, and that 5-axis stabilization actually makes handheld shooting a reality, something that traditionally uh, with UHD video is beyond, um, I won't say an impossibility, but a major challenge. So again, it does overheat. For my uses, uh, I think it's perfectly fine. Would I prefer that it didn't? Of course, no one wants overheating, and the fact that the A7R Mark II is the only camera of its kind, I think gives it a pass. Uh, that's pretty much how I interpret it. Everyone that has shot with it pretty much concurs that if there was something else to compare it to on the market, the conversation would be different. But since there isn't, and it does stand alone in its capability, form factor, uh, and flexibility, being able to work with uh, just about any lens and still have stabilization of some form, at least three axis, as opposed to the five you get with native FE lenses like the ones I just uh, showed all of you, it really does... Uh, give itself wiggle room or acceptability uh, for that overheat issue. So again, not something I'm in love with, but I also rarely will be, you know, out shooting with this camera uh, more than an hour straight. Keep in mind that video, of course, is limited because it's a still camera to clips of uh, 29.59, so a hair under 30 minutes. It's not a video camera. And really, if you need a video camera, you probably should be shooting with something like I am now, uh, the a, uh, the AX100, or even the downgrade, the less expensive uh, AX33. Uh, of course, there are more expensive options out there, but that's within the realm of being budget conscious and maybe a traditional consumer as opposed to a professional or even prosumer, whatever you want to categorize yourself as. But if you know, you're shooting for profit, if that's your field, then again, every uh, pro that I've spoken to has said they'd rather pick up two of these bodies than turn to any of the alternatives that are less feature rich uh, in order to actually compensate for that overheat issue. Hope this video helps and again addresses an area of contention that I really think uh, isn't an area of contention, but rather something that Sony, uh, you know, has to figure out a way next gen to resolve, but I'm just glad that we finally have a UHD capable 42 megapixel uh, full frame uh, backlit interchangeable lens uh, camera that really is the king of the hill right now. Uh, and in my opinion, definitely worth the price of admission. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.